Hello, this is Linda Vetris Nichols, and do I have an amazing woman to introduce to you, Ayana J. Daniels. Welcome, Ayana. Thank you so much, Linda. Absolutely. So we are going to talk about how everything is temporary. Wow, we don't think about that. We hang on to as much as we can in this life, making sure it stays. Because we all, uh, as uh, we ha we all have FOMO. Mm. We all believe like, there is this some yes fear of missing out. Like there is this something. This there's all these things going on, and we need to. We can't miss it. We have we have to be in the know. We have to. Yeah. To, and you really, you really don't. No, nope. you, and you're you not really safe don't. if you're not in the know. As humans, we are trained to believe that. So if something's yes. different, we're now longer in the know, and now we're in danger. So yeah. But do you have? Do we know? But really, do we have to know everything? Aha. Well, if we want to stay sane, no. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> like this is only so big, it's gonna explode. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. And you can. It's like driving, right? It's like driving. When you're driving, you cannot afford to look at everything. You only you need to pay attention to what you need to pay attention to. So to the road and conditions and other drivers, so that. You, your journey can be safe. You can arrive safe. As my chief said, when we were on a trip somewhere, he said, arrive alive. Arrive so if alive. You, if you want to arrive alive, you have to pay attention to only those things that are necessary. Yep. But I think, especially now with social media and all the different platforms, we feel this need to always be in the know about everything that's going on, yeah. except what's happening inside. <laughs> well it is an, a good avoidance tool and when it comes to like it birth is. and death you know it's like well for someone without a baby for me it was like one minute there's something in you and the next minute there's a whole other something outside of you and it's just like what and I haven't had the opportunity to like be at someone's deathbed I have worked you know interviewed death um, doulas and things and again it's it's that same like it's this to this and it's like what just happened and my favorite scene mm -hmm. from little women ah the movie with susan sarandon and winona mm -hmm. Ryder, yeah is is when beth actually does die um oh, spoiler wow. alert yeah because it is it's one minute they're talking and the next minute yeah. she just knows and like she's okay with it too in a way you know it's it's so it's so beautiful I just love that movie anyway so it is yeah it is. you know like growing up in Guyana there's a phrase that old people would say all the time and as a young girl you didn't quite understand okay what but as an adult I understand what it means as I grow older I understand what it means because there are many times you know I thank God that I was fortunate to know both of my maternal great grandmothers. Yeah, nice. As my maternal grandmother, as well as my paternal grandmother. Okay. Um, and just being around them as they age and they get older, there's a phrase, there are two phrases, especially my great grandmother, my maternal great grandmother, she died at 104. Oh. And there are two things she kept saying to us all the time and one was you know you're getting older when you have fewer friends uh, because yeah. your friends are dying off yep. and then the other thing she would say is like and all of my grandmothers even other old elderly women and men you would especially women because that's who I was around most was you hear I would hear them say quite often that they're tired and uh, they're ready and growing up I just thought they meant they're just We've been visiting too long. They're ready to go to bed. Right. But as I get older, I realize what they mean is that, hey, I've lived a life. I feel complete. Mm -hmm. And I am fine. I am at peace with the world. And I am, my children are healthy. Or even if they're not, my children are grown. My great-grandchildren are grown. My great-great-grandchildren for some they're here and I can see my legacy yeah. kept being carried on. There's nothing left for me to do but to go. Uh, and I think that is such a peaceful and healthy way of looking at death instead of this sorrowful thing. 
yeah, yes, it's sorrowful. What's gonna exactly. Happen. Yes, it's sorrowful because, and selfishly, I want my mom here all the time with me. Oh, I, yeah. I don't. I don't want my mom to die before me. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I want her here all the time, but she will go before me, and that's okay. So I think we have to be comfortable and say death is something that's inevitable. Yeah. So live the life that you want to live. Um, choose the life that you want. Ooh, there you go. And be, and be comfortable changing those choices over time. Mm -hmm. Because as you, as you grow and you move around different spaces and places in the world and see different people and right. have different experiences, your view of the world will, slight, will shift slightly and you may want something else. You may realize, oh, that is not what I really wanted. There you go. Yeah. And then you can pivot. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You have the freedom to choose. You have the freedom to pivot. You can do a complete 180 degrees if you want to. An about face, direction. as you say in the military. You can yeah. do an Hello. about face Thanks. if you want to. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> so that's the beauty, you know? Like they, and then like tongue in cheek, you know, we will all, we always say there's only two things or three things are certain in life. You born, you pay taxes, you die. Yeah. The taxes part. Yeah. That's just tongue in cheek, but we can face death gracefully. And speaking of death, I recently, I haven't read the book, but my grade school teacher introduced me. It's called about how the Swedish approach death. Good. I think it's Swedish. They do, yes, there's an, uh, she wrote, I forgot her name, but she wrote a book on Swedish death cleaning. Like, what? Right. But they, in Sweden, apparently they have this practice where they start as early as age 40 or maybe beyond, or maybe even earlier, where they start getting rid of things that they no longer need to simplify life for themselves, but more importantly, to simplify the process for their loved ones. Yeah. Because when they are gone, you know, whomever is their estate's executor now has to deal with a house full of stuff. Yeah, right. They don't know what to do with. And I think nice. that is also such a beautiful way of approaching your autumn years. Yeah, and you know, letting just, go of stuff, you know, because stuff is yes. attached to ego. And the hardest thing with death is the death of the ego, if you will, because I mean, there's cultures that sit around um, with the dying person, helping their ego, if you will, to to transition well. It's that whole concept is super, super interesting. So yeah becoming more spiritual if you will more of a, getting in touch with your spiritual being and um and letting go of stuff is beautiful yeah so choice comes in the middle i love that because even though it's going a certain way you can really slow down take a look at the way it's going and and shift so how how do you feel about choice comes in the middle what comes up for you ayana it's like any journey, you know, maybe I'm going to drive to North Carolina and I say, okay, I'm going to take I-95 and like, maybe I don't want to take 95. I'll just decide I'm going to go 85, even though now my chain, now my directional change may, may take me longer yeah. to get to my destination, but there's no one, there is no one route to get to where you want to go. Right. You know, exactly. when you begin the journey, you have an idea you have a concept of how you should get there and the route you should take based on your already lived experience mm -hmm. and also the little tidbits that you gather from those people who are close to you and maybe in some cases some experts mm -hmm. but then along the way you realize that the journey is your, your journey <laughs> my journey right <laughs> So yeah. even though you may tell me, Linda, hey, Ayanna, just come straight 95. I may say, I know Linda said I should take 95, but I really prefer going 85. Okay, how can I, how can I switch from 95 to 85? And then yeah. I check the directions and I, and I switch. Right. So, or you I just feel some, led to go that other way. It's like, yeah, something doesn't feel right about the 95. It's something's telling me to go the other way. And listening to your intuition is everything. 
it's so and is something that we take for granted like how many situations do we stay in too long yeah yeah when yeah. our when our intuition told us eons ago that it's time to let go of this situation and find another one we yeah. do that with relationships we do that with jobs we yeah. do that with just about everything hey. yeah yeah and uh, toxic usually, relationships you know, a lot of times as well mm-hmm. and well that's what i was really that's where i but that's what really came up yeah so the the time that you waste mm-hmm. no no let me reframe that <laughs> the time that you spend in something invest how about we really reframe it to invest the time you invest in something that was not deserving of your investment there you go yeah right so and i had to change that from waste because in every situation and every experience you learn something about you yeah and you learn something about the world so while it was not the ideal experience and it was not what you certainly did not wish for yourself. You did not plan on turning around and doing it again. (laughs) And (laughs) and would not wish it for anyone else. But in the end, you learn something else about yourself. And you also learn something else about the world. So you still come out of it with a lesson and a blessing. Um, I like that. A lesson and a blessing. Yes. And we get to recreate, we create and recreate our stories from our lessons, from our blessings. We do. And from our intuition, like, "Mm, it's just not feeling right. I love it. Very cool. Yeah, we get, we get, and just like choice, we get to choose the parts of our stories that we want to emphasize. Oh, yeah. We get to choose the parts of our stories that we want to share with others and we also get to choose the parts of our stories that we selfishly need to keep Mm. for ourselves yeah um my only thing is in 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 the reinvention and the recreation process is that we need to take care that we remain authentic yeah to who we are Mm -hmm. and to be very honest with the only person that matters ourselves. It's okay really? if you it's okay if you hide some things from people. Everyone does not need to know and everyone does not deserve to know everything. Right. But it's important but it's important that you are honest about yourself. Yeah. With yourself about the good, the bad, the terrible, about everything about you. Yeah. Yeah. And then absolutely. Just, and then just choose to move forward with the things that you need and the things that will serve you. Love it. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ayana. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye.